Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to give my thoughts on the Orion Devar Temporal Science Vessel, a brand new Direct to Infinity Lockbox ship, which is going to be added to PC on March 14th, and will be arriving on console sometime later in April. As always, chapters to everything are listed down below. First up, let's talk availability. Like I said, this is a Direct to Infinity Lockbox ship, and that means that there's three different ways that you can go about picking this ship up. The first route is to open the Infinity Lockbox and try to get one of the T6 ship prize packs from it. Now keep in mind the drop rate on these is abysmally low and on average you're going to be spending two to three hundred dollars to get a single T6 ship box and these Infinity Lockbox ships these are just ships for a single character so you're spending potentially two to three hundred dollars to get a ship or a single character. Now the cheaper route to go is to just pick up some keys in the Zen store and post them up on the exchange because like any other Infinity Lockbox ship, there are going to be people posting this up on the market and the going rate for most of the newer Infinity Lockbox ships tends to be around 1.3 to 1.5 billion EC. So if you go in and pick up about 100 bucks worth of master keys during the, the key sale that's going to be going on alongside the launch of the ship, then you should be able to pick the ship up for about a hundred bucks for a single character via the, the player exchange. So again, you know, whatever route you're looking to get the ship right now, it is going to be expensive. And if you want it on more than one character, you're going to be spending a lot to do so. Now, if you want to get the ship for free from the event campaign, it is worth noting that event campaign six, which is running in 2024, will not have the ship as an option from the premium T6 starship choice pack. The event campaign premium ship choice packs have a limitation on them in that they do not have any ships from the year of the event campaign included in them, meaning that if you want to get the Orion Devar from an event campaign, you'll have to wait for event campaign seven in 2025. So a bit of a wait there if, if you want to get the ship for free, but if you want to get it right away, again, my recommendation would be to just sell some keys on the exchange and just use energy credits to pick the ship up. And as far as customization goes, the variant of the Devar that we're shown here is from Strange New Worlds, specifically that Lower Decks crossover episode. And the lore here does reference the variant that was encountered in TOS that almost took down the original Enterprise. And that is actually a model that has already been in the game in the Return to Babel mission for quite a long time now. But there's no indication here that that's going to be a kit bashable option for this ship. There's nothing here indicating we're going to have that TOS skin as an option. And when you look at that skin there, it clearly would need some, some polishing before that would be a player flyable model. So I, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the Strange New Worlds visual is probably the only visual we're going to have access to when this goes live tomorrow. And before I get into the stats here, I do want to note that this is a science vessel, which does feel like a bit of a missed opportunity. If you look at the, the wiki page for this ship, it is referenced to being a scout ship. And in STO, there's actually a subclass of science ships called scout ships. So a bit of a missed opportunity there. And we're going to see that that does negatively impact the, the stats here with this just being a science vessel versus being a scout ship. So heading into the stats now, hull modifier of 0 0.9, shield mod of 1.3. It's got a 3-3 weapon setup with three device slots. For the bridge officer setup here, you've got a commander science with a temporal operative, an ensign science, a lieutenant commander engineer with intel, a lieutenant tactical, and a lieutenant commander universal. So this is still going to be a very capable bridge officer setup for an EPG focused build. But for pretty much anything else, there's going to be better ship options out there. But for, for EPG, that temp op and intel combo is going to be really nice for all of the spore infused anomaly procs you're going to be able to fit on this ship. And it's got enough science seating that you're going to be able to make this a very effective EPG platform. The Lieutenant Tactical does limit it a bit compared to some of the other options out there like the Vern, but you're still going to be able to work around that and be able to get very good performance from this ship. Console wise, you've got two tack, four inch and five psi. It has a base turn rate of 11, impulse mod of 0 0.2, inertia of 60. It has plus 20 and eight aux power. It has zero hangar bays. Being a temporal ship, it does have the molecular reconstruction ship mechanic. It has a secondary deflector, subsystem targeting and sensor analysis. 
And for the mastery package, it just has the normal science vessel one, which is plus exotic damage, plus shield HP, plus healing, and plus shield regen and hardness. And heading over to the ship comparison here, the ships I want to compare the Devar against are the Sphere Builder Adolg, the Vern, and the Lucari Journey Scout ship. The reason that this comparison is a bit more narrow than usual is because if you're looking at the Devar from a stats point of view, the type of build you're probably going to be looking at setting up on it is an EPG build. These EPG builds focus on getting most of their damage output from Starship Traits, Consoles, their Bridge Officer setup, and their Secondary Deflector. The, the weapons on those EPG builds are usually just parts of sets so that you can get the two and three piece bonuses to buff the rest of the build. So it's a very different play style from normal. And as such, I'm going to be comparing the Devar against some of the established meta platforms that are used for that play style. And if you want to learn more about exotics, I'd recommend you take a look at Still Better's Exotic Basics guide. And if you want to see some of these high end EPG builds in action, I'll have Hansi Houston's YouTube channel link down below where you can see some high end HSE runs that he did with the Adolg and the Vern. And what all this EPG stuff means for this comparison is that the weapon setup doesn't matter, nor does the console setup, because most of the high end EPG builds are pretty much running entirely universal consoles in every slot. So what really matters is does the ship have a secondary deflector and how compatible is the bridge officer setup with the EPG meta? And generally, you want to have as much science and temporal seating as possible. That's what's made the Vern and the Lucari Jenner such strong options over the years, because as you can see, both of these have room for a ton of science abilities and there's not really any engineering or tactical getting in the way. Now on the Vern, you do have an instant engineer and thankfully that you can run emergency powered ox there. And there's a bunch of stuff that interacts really well with emergency powered ox that makes it a boost for, for the Vern. So that's not really a negative in that case. With the Adolg and the Devar, the engineering seat at least has an Intel spec uh, seat on it also. So you can get away with having that high ranking engineering seat because you can also go in and put Intel spec abilities on there. And there are some Intel abilities that have good interaction with traits like spore infused anomalies. There are some Intel abilities that will also work with an inhibiting secondary deflector if you're running one of those. But overall, Intel just has some stuff on it that does interact well with the science stuff. So the Adolg and Devar can get away with having that engineering seating there because of the Intel abilities. Now, the negative for the Devar and the Adolg is generally the tactical seating. And there are workarounds for this, but generally having a forced tack seat on a science ship has been viewed negatively. Now, the two ways that you can get around this are by using traits that will work with tactical abilities to buff up your EPG stuff. So if you look at like Hansi Houston's Edolg run, what he did there is he had attack pattern Omega on for assault formation theta, which I'll show you here. So assault formation theta gives you some starship weapon amplification, which is uh, crit severity. And the reason that that's going to benefit an EPG build is because of the Revo two piece. The Revo two piece gives you an exotic damage, critical severity buff that scales with starship weapon amplification. So you're basically using assault formation theta to go in and give your EPG abilities some more critical severity for a short duration. So that's one way to work around having some tactical seating on a ship, but the Devar has only a Lieutenant tack seat, so it can't run attack pattern Omega to, to go in and utilize Theta. Instead, what you have to do on the Devar is go in and utilize weaponized exotic particles. This is the trait off of the Terran Trailblazer. And when you use standard weapon firing modes, what this does is it gives you an exotic damage buff. So, you know, it's, it's not as ideal as having just another science seat there, in my opinion, but that is one way to, to work around the Devar having that tactical seating instead. But when it comes to the Devar versus the, the, the Vern or the Lucari Junior Scout ship, you know, against the Lucari and the Vern, those are much more accessible ships than the Devar. And you don't have to worry about dealing with that tax seating. So I think for a lot of you, especially those of you that already have a Vern or Lucari Junior Scout ship, you're probably fine to just stick with those. I don't think the Devar is really bringing in enough new to, to make you need to go out and pick the Devar up over a Vern. If the Devar had been a scout ship, which again would have made sense given that it's referenced to being a scout ship, if it had been a scout ship and had that commander side with temporal and then a bunch of universal seating under it, 
it probably would have stepped in and replaced the Vern as like the, the meta go to platform for a lot of people. But given that it's not a scout ship and it has a lot of force seating on it, I, I think that there's still a lot of appeal to those older platforms. And, you know, the Lucard Junior Scout Ship, that's a fleet ship, very easy to get. And the Vern, well, you can get that from the Stealing Time Choice Pack. That That's a MUDS bundle. It'll cost you 150 bucks, but that's getting you the Vern on a count-wide unlock. And we should have a MUDS sale popping up here in the next week or so as we approach the end of month, the end of uh, March. So, you know, from, from a cost point of view, the Orion Devar is going to cost you 100 bucks to get on a single character via its cheapest route right now. And for 150, you can get the, the Vern and some other ships on a count wide unlock for 150. So cost wise, I, I think that the Vern is still the better option to go with. Or the Lucard Junior Scout Ship if you're looking for a fleet option. And even the Edolg, if you're looking to do that Temp Intel combo, that's a Lobby Store ship. So that's also pretty accessible. And this, the Edolg. That also has a hangar bay on it. So if you want to run like a bay of type sevens to get some extra debuff in there, the Edol can do that, whereas none of these other platforms can. So really there's pros and cons to each of these options here. The Devar can do OSS3 along with some of the other Intel stuff if you want to do that. The Sphere Builder Edolg, again, it's got that hangar bay and you can do a salt formation theta if you want to have that interaction with the Revo set. The, the Vern and Lucari Junior Scout Ship, those are just a bit easier to get into. You don't have to worry about the tax stuff. And again, both of them are much more accessible. So there's pros and cons to each of these, but the Devar doesn't scream out to me as being a ship that's just going to jump in and replace the other options. I think it's going to be a very capable ship for, for an EPG play style, but I don't think it's anything you need to, to rush out to go and pick up, especially if you already have some of these other options. And for the Admiralty card, it is 47 Engineering, 74 Science, and 5 TAC, and the Special is plus 35 Science when alone. And next up is the Universal Console Temporal Anchor, which is pretty much designed for those of you that use Delayed Overload Cascade and sent enemies flying off into the distance. Activating this console will anchor the target foes to their place in time, as well as dealing some radiation damage via the massive release of chronotons in the area. After a delay, the foes return to their position at the exact moment of activation and take the radiation damage again. Initially developed as a means of protecting scientific discoveries from theft by ensuring enemies could not escape, the Temporal Anchor proved useful in other contexts as well. Its primary advantage is in enabling the combination of gravity wells and disruptive technologies, allowing foes to be gathered together, sent flying off into the distance, then returned, allowing the best of both worlds. So this, this is pretty much tailor-made for those of you that like to grab well enemies together, and then hit Delayed Overload Cascade to send them flying off into the distance. If you like doing that, this is pretty much going to be a console that you're going to want to go in and pick up because you would hit the grab well, then hit this console, and then hit Delayed Overload Cascade. And after they've been sent flying off, they're going to be dragged back to you through this console, and you'll be able to hit them again. So the, the clicky on the console sounds like it's going to be extremely fun for those science builds, and I, I imagine some of you are going to be doing some crazy things with the ability to DOC and then drag them right back in and the console provides a passive bonus to flight speed and control expertise. So, you know, we'll have to see how it performs, but on paper, this this looks like it'll be a very interesting console for, for EPG heavy builds. Again, especially those of you that hit your DLC very early on and have enemies flying all over the map. Next up is the Starship Trait Temporal Artifact Scan. And basically what this does is it's going to randomly mark an enemy around you and once you defeat that randomly marked enemy, it's going to drop an artifact into space that you have to fly over and pick up. Once you pick that up, it will provide you a significant buff to critical severity until you leave the map. This effect does have a long cooldown, but eventually another artifact will be found on another ship and you can go and repeat the process to get another stack of the crit severity buff. So I expect that in shorter duration maps like Infected, you're probably not going to see much value from the starship trait. But if you're doing queues that are typically, you know, like eight, 10 minutes long, then you might get a bit more out of this trait. But, you know, wait and see what the numbers are. But I would go in expecting this to probably not be that impactful of a trait, especially in shorter duration runs. And it is time for my final thoughts here. I think the Devar is a perfectly capable EPG platform. But I think if you're looking to do pretty much any other play style, you're going to find better ships out there. 
if you're looking to do do Sai, you know, the, the Chekhov was recently put in the sea store. And I think that's probably going to be a bit better for that play style. The Atlantis is also good for do Sai, but if you're looking for, for raw EPG, again, like I showed with that comparisons there, I, I do think that there are other platforms out there that are a bit more accessible that are going to be equally as capable or more capable, depending on what exactly you're doing with your build. The Lucari Junior Scout ship is a fleet ship. It's pretty hard to, to beat the cost there. The, the Vern Temporal Science Vessel, that's part of a MUDS bundle, and that MUDS bundle should be available in the C store again briefly next week at the end of March. So I think the Devar is a good ship. The, the console on it's probably going to be fun for those of you that want to hit your DLC on targets right away. But if you're a bit bit patient with your DSC and wait till the enemies are down under 50%. You usually don't have to worry about stuff too much then. So I, I think the ship and the, the console are going to be fun, but I don't think that they're really going to change the, the EPG meta. And I think that if you already have these existing platforms, I think you're perfectly fine sticking with them. I think you'll have fun playing with the Devar, but again, I don't think it's going to, you know, go in and completely change the game for you. So it's an interesting ship. I, I think it would have been in a much stronger position had it been a scout ship instead of a science vessel. Again, the, the wiki page says that it's a scout ship, so very much a missed opportunity there. But overall, I think it's a fine ship, just very hard to justify with the, the price tag it's going to have, especially compared against the, the other options, which are much more accessible and will offer comparable or better performance. But that's going to be it for today. Let me know what you guys think of the ship down below. Is this one that you're interested in picking up? Or is it one that you're going to avoid now because of what I've said here? Let me know down below. And as always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. I'll see you guys around.